Thank you all so much. I know you've picked up tons of ideas over the past two and a half days. It's been an absolute privilege to share this event with all of you. This is with, for, and by all of you. This is a community event. It's just a privilege to share it with you. You probably have a lot of tactics you've written down, some you may be thinking about, got lit up on. I wanna leave you, uh, or start this and leave the event with a couple related questions. And the first one is, how many contacts do you have in your phone right now? Or how many people are you connected to on social? Or how many people are in your database or your CRM? How many is that? And I don't mean everybody, I mean the good ones, like the A's and the B's and the families and the friends. People you could call up and say, I need 100 bucks. Now you probably don't need 100 bucks, but someone that you would ask that to and they would say, yes, I'm all in, right? How many is that? Is that 250, 500, maybe 1,000 people, maybe? Okay, and now think, in the past year, how many of those people have you spoken with or spent time with in person? Half, maybe if you're super lucky and your starting number was low, a third, a quarter, probably 10%, right? What would it mean to your business if you just took two, three, four minutes in the morning and sent two videos a day to, to people in your phone? or people that you see on social that had something good or bad happen that you maybe might want to connect with. What would happen if you sent two videos a day? It'd take you about five minutes, it's 10 videos a week. It's about 500 videos a year. You might look back and say, gosh, I can never do 500 videos in a year, but what if you just reached out to two people a day just to say hi or thank you or I've been thinking about you or I saw Timmy made captain of the soccer team, that's so awesome, I hope he has a great season, or I'm sorry to hear about your grandmother, or gosh, I'm so proud of you and I'm really excited for what's next in this phase of your life. What would happen if you just did that a couple times a day? Would it be good for your business? It'd probably be amazing for your business, but let's put that on the side for a minute because this is rehumanized. It does all tie together, but that's not all of what it's about. Think about what it means for you to be in front of all the people who matter most to your life and your business in a truly personal way, for you to be seen and heard and felt and understood more often, every single day, the conversations that start, and this ability for you to be seen and heard. It's all you really want. So many of the decisions you make, the clothes you wear, the, the way we carry ourselves, it's all fundamentally around wanting to be seen and heard. I need people to know who I am. I need that in my life. We all need it at a deeply fundamental human level. Even more importantly, what would it mean for those 500 people? Or let's say you take a bunch of time off. What it would mean for those 300 people for you to reach out in a personal way with a video, one-to-one, -one, that allows them to know that they've been seen and heard and felt and understood. I'm so sorry to hear about your grandmother, right? That's a big deal. That's all any of us wants. We're so desperate, especially as so much of our work and our lives become digital. We're so desperate for that. And so that's where we're gonna start here. This is Rehumanize Your Business. Raise your hand if you know that this book exists. Awesome, that's great. Uh, now keep your hand up if this is still true of you. You can put it down if it's not. How many of you have ordered this book? Awesome. How many of you have started reading the book? Good, good. Hands still up if this is still true. How many of you have read most or all of the book? Killer. Last one, I promise. Keep your hand up. How many of you have left an Amazon review? Oh, need those Amazon reviews. No guilt, no guilt. Thank you so much. Uh, no guilt. We need those Amazon reviews. As JB said, this book has been very, very well received. We just released it two weeks ago. It's been a number one bestseller on Amazon in business communication, business sales, and customer relations. It's super relevant. Thank you. Oh, and you helped make it happen. Again, this is a community event. And uh, it's the number one best-selling book for 800 CEO Read, which exclusively does business books in bulk for the entire month of April. That is the number one bestseller. And it's week of release. It was number 23 overall in Barnes & Noble and number 17 overall in hardcover. So really well received. And our names are on the cover, Steve's and mine are, but obviously represents the work of dozens and dozens of people. And, uh, and I, in fact, many of you in the room are included in the book and or we coulda, shoulda, woulda included you in the book, but editing is gonna be a theme here. We could not get everything in there. Um, and so this is really a celebration of all of you. And so I don't wanna get all Oprah on you, but we've, we brought gifts. <laughs> we've got one for all of you, look under your chair. 
I'm just kidding, it's not under your chair. They're all outside. They're all outside beautifully stacked on tables and one of those is yours on the way out. And so, hey, it's a $25 book. I mean, I saw what these hotel rooms cost, so claps to you. Uh, it's just our way of saying thank you and leaving you with something that you can carry forward and maybe pick up on. And so, uh, what you're going to get when you get that book is it's the definitive guide to better business communication. I think you all understand it after spending two and a half days with your friends and peers and with all of us in this community. It's all about the relationships through video movement. You've learned a lot of tactics. Some of those we, we bucket into marketing through video. This book is exclusively about relationships through video. What is it and what isn't it? Why does this matter? Why does this matter to you? Why does this matter to your clients? Why does this matter to your family? Why does this matter to your, to your business partners and other people that are involved? Why should you participate in it? Who's actually doing it? Again, this is kind of a, a, um, a, a great room for it because you already get it and many of you are included in the book already. We've taught from your examples. So, but for the person who would never come to this event, they don't know that it exists, they don't know that this is a real opportunity, they don't know that every day they're relying on plain typed out text that doesn't differentiate them, that doesn't build trust, it doesn't build rapport, and it doesn't communicate nearly as well as so you just look someone in the eye through the lens, just spoke to them person to person. So they want to know who are these people and what are they doing? When are you actually sending video instead of plain typed out text? I think you're going to find some great examples in there. And how do you actually do it? Most of you probably understand how, but how do you put a video in an email? How do you put a video in a text message? How do you put a video in a LinkedIn message or a Facebook message? So we go, with, go through all that and we have a ton of advanced strategies. So how do you get more email opens? How do you get more link clicks? How do you get more replies and responses? How do you get more people to play the video? We have all of that and follow-up strategies. What do you do when you send a video email to 60 people, as Jeff Wagner did, uh, he's talking about here. What do you do with all the people who opened it but didn't play the video? Or let's say you send a one-to-one -one video email. What do you do with that person who opened the email, they played the video, but they never replied, responded, clicked the link, or took you up on the opportunity that you presented to them in that video email? So we have all of that and a look to the future. It's funny, uh, Wiley, when they, our publisher was writing about it, they talk about the last chapter of the book and they say, they opine on the future of this dynamic dynamic movement. I was like, that sounds really good. And then I looked up opine and it's just the verb version of opinion. That is exactly what we did, but it's, you know, not, not as thrilling. It sounded really, like really cool when I read that. So here are three fundamental truths that re-emerged top of mind in the process of working with so many people on the BombBomb Bomb team and with Steve on getting this thing into your hands. Again, it's waiting for you outside the room. First one, this one should be a no-brainer. Relationships are the whole point. They're the whole point. They are why we are here. We are here to be in relation with other people. One of the reasons some of you chose the business that you're in is that it allows you to connect with other people. It allows you to help people, or challenge people, or support people, or love people, or pat people on the back, or give people a kick in the ass when they need it. We are here to be in relationship with other people. We're social creatures. We're fellow human beings. And ultimately, our experience here, no matter what we do, is about being in relationship and being in connection with other people. And so as we went through this process, these are just three quick and easy examples. I could have given you dozens but they only gave me 35 minutes, and it's a privilege. Uh, as we started going down the road of how to write a book and how to publish a book, it immediately became clear that there were all these multiple paths, like the how to write a book had all these forks in the road, and how to publish a book, all these forks in the road, like what are we gonna do? And so instead of just taking some guesses and making some bets, I decided to reread books written by people I knew personally reach out to them and say, would you talk to me about how you wrote and published your book? And of course, all six people I asked said yes, because people love to help each other. We love to share our experience. I, it's just wonderful. I got so much great advice from these people. I talked with people who self-published and people who had publishing deals. I talked with uh, a gentleman who straight up hold himself in a room, wrote for 14 to 16 hours a day and got his book written in less than two weeks. I also talked with a guy who's a, a good friend of mine, a, an active consultant, who could only just chip away at it each morning. It took him about two years to do. He took a couple two-week periods here and there where he could to really knock out some larger pieces of work. So I, we got this full picture of all these different forks and which ones might be right for us. Any of you know Chris Smith, curator? 
So wrote the conversion code, it's up here on the screen. I sent him a video email one afternoon about nine or 10 months ago. And I saw, cause of course we track everything. I could see him open it and see him play the video immediately. And it was with this request. He didn't reply to the email. He didn't text me. He straight up picked up the phone and called me. This is like at 430 Mountain, which is 630 in Orlando where he is. He just called me almost instantly and gave me about 75 minutes of his time. He self-published and been published. Super, super helpful. People want to help. When someone reaches out to you, are you not eager to share your experience and be of value? Of course you are, because it allows us to be in connection with other people. And so these folks were awesome and helpful. Does anyone recognize these? Uh, real estate mortgage professionals. <laughs> Good. I'm, I'm glad that was a laugh. I'm glad that was a clap because they were just here with you and they're still here with you. Um, these are just three of about three dozen customers whose examples we share and talk about in the book. And the reason they're there, and this has been enough, like when I was thinking about the final session, I was like, gosh, what am I going to do that's really going to like button all this up? All I'm doing is speaking to all the themes that you've heard throughout the whole thing. The reason these three people are in the book is the same reason that these three people are on the stage, which is the same reason that they've been in a blog post or a webinar or a stage presentation or one of our downloadable PDFs. It's because they get out there, they do it, they try it, they learn, they fail. Ruby's a process, she iterated on it multiple times before she got to what you saw here. But they don't hoard these things when they work. They don't hide them and keep them to themselves and say, I have a really great strategy and I'm going to keep it all on myself. You are your own best differentiator, so why not share what's working with video? And that's what these people do. These people, everyone I reached out to to say, hey, is it cool if I share your story in a book because our publisher wanted that kind of level of clearance? They didn't want someone to be surprised and get angry. I don't know why they would ever think that anyone would. But it's because of the nature of the community that I work in. Of course no one gave me resistance or flack. Of course everyone was super excited. Of course they shared this with their family and friends because that's the type of community that we have all built together. This is your community. You might recognize two or three of these gentlemen. They are three of 10 people who are kind enough to re, uh, review advanced copies of the book and say really nice things about them. We went a little bit traditional here, getting nice words on the, on the back of the uh, jacket and inside the front cover of the book. We, we went that route. And, and so several BombBomb team members uh, know Tom Ferry personally. He's a text messenger, a phone call away, number one real estate coach. And um, he was very helpful instantly. What can I do? How can I help? When can I buy him? No, no, dude, we just need you to look at this advanced copy and say something nice about it, right? But it's amazing. Uh, Adam Contos, Darren Dawson has been building that relationship with him because they just got along famously from the get-go years ago when he was running franchise sales. He was in charge of a team of people that was responsible for generating Remax franchises. And five or six promotions later, he's the CEO of the company, and he's a personal friend of many people on the team, but it's because of all that time that's invested along the way. Sincere relationship, and so when it comes time to say, hey, would, are you interested in participating, an email or a phone call away. Daniel Pink, does, raise your hand if you're familiar with Daniel Pink and his work. Okay, cool, not as many as I thought, not as impressive as I thought. Um, he is the, he's, he's a number one best-selling author. He's written about a half dozen number one New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Washington Post bestsellers, Drive, which is the science of motivation and what motivates us. Uh, when is his newer book, The Science of Perfect Timing. And the book that we leaned on was To Sell as Human, which makes the argument that literally all of us are in sales. Everyone in this room is pretty much in sales, but other people outside this community don't necessarily see themselves in sales, even though every single one of us is. So we go way, way back, Dan Pink and I. We know we don't. I didn't know him at all, and he didn't know me. But I reached out to him, it's gonna blow your mind, with a video email. And, <laughs> But, but it was awesome. Subject line on page 178 of to sell as human dot dot dot. What author's not going to open that, right? <laughs> and then when he opens it up, of course, we present a nice little animated preview. And I have written on a whiteboard, I quote him and his argument for why video is such a great tool. And it's because it blends the efficiency of electronic communication, right? We like to live in these digital channels because it's quick and easy, but it blends it with the warmth of your face and voice and personality. So we love his ideas, we love his arguments, he advocates for video, why not reach out to him, see if he would engage on it. It was kind of a long shot. I guarantee you 100%, 100%, 
that the reason he engaged on this, because I guarantee he also gets many unsolicited manuscripts in hopes of getting someone who's done this a half dozen times at the highest level to help, to help them do it, I reached out with a sincere personal deal. I didn't blindly reach out to a bunch of best-selling authors to say, hey, you know, I'd throw a bunch of lines in the water and hoping something would go. I said, hey man, I love your work. I saw you speak two years ago. I read To Sell as Human three times. In fact, Steve and I lean on it multiple times in this book that we just wrote. Here are the reasons we did that. And by the way, you leaned on video in there. That's what this is all about. And so I guarantee that is exactly why he engaged. Targeted, personal, he felt a little bit like he knew me. Even if he didn't like me, he at least felt some sense of social reciprocity, like, nah, this guy's pretty sincere. He means it, and so when we reach out to people with video, it can build relationship even where there was not one to start, and it's a zillion times better than plain typed out text. Now, you, if you remember Steve's presentation yesterday, this is from our visit to 800 CEO Read. Again, these folks have been specializing in bulk purchasing of business books exclusively for 35 years. They are experts in what they do. In a way, they're kind of an anti-Amazon. So that gentleman, Aaron, behind the stack of books there, he was an email signature to me. We'd maybe spoken on the phone once. Super responsive and professional, but we didn't know him. And so uh, we made commitments to sign about 1,100 copies of the book, Steve and I did. And, uh, and in fact, your book waiting for you outside is signed by both Steve and me. And sure. And, and, and so we knew that that was going to happen, so we reached out to Aaron, like, Aaron, man, we got to sign like 1,100 copies of the book. He said, okay. I said, how do, how do we do that? He said, well, what we typically do is we ship them to you. You open them all up, sign them all, box them up, and ship them back. He's like, that sounds, not, sounds kind of stupid. So I talked to Steve. Two seconds later, we're like, no, that's, we're not going to do that. We're not going to ship the books. We're going to ship ourselves. We're going to spend the day in Milwaukee, Wisconsin at 800 CEO Read. This guy's going to be a business partner with us for years just on this book alone. If we decide to write another one, which we are talking about, but it's years away, don't pressure me. Uh, <laughs> These, they're awesome people and, and they do exactly what we need done and, and they do a great job of it. They're business partners of ours. Why not, for almost the same cost, much faster, just show up in person and spend some time? So it took us about a half day to sign all those books. And during that time, we got to know Aaron really, really well. We talked about music. We talked about sports. We talked about food. We talked about beer. We talked about books. We talked about business. We talked about business books. We talked, there's a lot of books to sign, so we did a lot of talking. And, and their CEO came in, she was amazing, super personal, so happy to have us there. As Steve mentioned yesterday, we were like the third author ever to do it this way. Even though it was instinctively what we knew was right, like why would we pay all the money to ship these books back and forth when we can just get on a plane and go hang out in Milwaukee? It was so much better. And, and the CEO gave us a great lunch recommendation that we would have completely missed had we not spent 15, 20 minutes with her. So of course we shot her a video outside that restaurant. That video to date has been played 22 times. It was a one-to-one -one video email. I guarantee she shared it with the whole company. Who do you think they're gonna invite to their next party? Steve, he's so much handsomer than I am. <laughs> So, um, by the way, these boxes, uh, no joke on this one. So these boxes, each box has 20 books in it. We decided to do something fun here. I am going to get Oprah on you this morning at 6.30 while you were at Starbucks or sleeping or at the gym or watching the snow out your window. I was down here. I taped uh, five of these. They look just like this. They're under five chairs in this room right now. So feel free to look directly under your chair. There's one right there. Congratulations. Um, and, and if your neighbor has left, congratulations, you can claim his or her box of books. Um, we will uh, just connect with me afterward, or I have two email addresses on there. Connect with me in person or reach out to that email address. Next week, we will send you a box of books. Sure, so the, so the book hunt continues. All right, there you go. Awesome, there's one in the back. We got three. I know there are two on this side of the room. There's one. I think there's another one somewhere over here. I don't remember. Or in the back. There you go. There it is. There's all five. All right. So A, it's kind of fun. It's a little bit Willy Wonka golden ticket style thing. I thought about tucking them in the books that are outside. It'd be more fun to do it in the room. 
This message is super important and we wanna get it out there. We know that you understand the message. So those books are for your team or your clients. It's super appropriate to almost anyone working in a professional capacity. Check out this bootleg standing desk. This is bootleg. Look at that, that's a, that's a step stool. That's an exercise step. That's a stack of cookbooks. That is bootleg and it's on an old fashioned TV stand. If you read the first chapter of the book, you know how important it would be for me to go live and work for my dad's house for a month, build this bootleg standing desk because I really like standing while I work. If you read the first chapter and when you read the first chapter, you know how important it was for me to spend that month with him. You'll understand why I got zero resistance and in fact a lot of encouragement and support from my team members in going away and spending a month there. And my dad's 76, he still works every day, leaves, leaves for work at 5.30 in the morning. He's a child psychiatrist. So I would get up at five every day, hang out with him for a half hour, drink coffee, make a green drink for later in the day and see him off to work. And then I would just go to this bootleg standing desk and write for about two hours. And then I'd go outside for a run, take a quick shower. And then I would meet up with Steve by Zoom. He's outside Philadelphia. My dad lives in Michigan. And the really unique dynamic here is that typically I'm two hours behind Steve. So sometimes I'll show up at the office at 6.30 or 7, which is 8.30 or 9 his time, and we'll do like an early meeting before the rest of the office kind of gets going. But here on this trip, we had a different working dynamic, a deeper, like we've worked together for years, we worked together great, like it was a no-brainer to, to, to co-author this book together. And, but this brought a different dynamic because we were able to co-work side by side in real time for two or two and a half hours a day while the rest of the office was still kind of getting itself together back in Colorado. So, so many moments along this journey were unique to me and special to me and, and reminded me that relationships are the whole point. And so here's the takeaway on point one of three. Your success is enabled, your real success, your true success, those moments in your life that make a difference are made possible when you unlock the opportunity to work with, through, and for other people. Is that true? It's completely true and it's so easy to lose sight of. That's why I made it one of my three points. Relationships are the whole point. Number two, you cannot edit what is not written. You cannot take the second step until you take the first step. You cannot optimize a process that is not running. You cannot improve something that does not exist. You cannot edit what is not written. So those things that you're sitting on, coulda, shoulda, woulda, you need to start those things and they're not gonna be perfect out of the gate. So check this out, that's a super legit standing desk. That is so real, look at that, man, so tidy. That is, uh, if you're wondering, that is in the corner of my kitchen. Uh, in my 1952 brick and stucco ranch in Colorado Springs, about two, two miles south of the office, which is in downtown Colorado Springs. If you were to list this home for sale, you would use the adjective cozy and everyone would know exactly what you meant. <laughs> so in the cozy corner in my kitchen at the super legit standing desk, Steve and I continued to work together. This is where the final third of the book was written. And you can't edit what isn't written was a mantra throughout the whole process. So we had a table of contents, then we hung in some ideas and examples. So we had a really rich outline. And then I would just write, I would write, 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 write. And Steve is right on my heels like, what about this story? Check out this example, check out, click this link and check out the story. We could lean on those statistics. What about this? What about that? How about we flip those things? And it was this constant give and take, but he had nothing to react to until I was able to hack it all in. Some of it was good on the first pass, not perfect, but good. And some of it was terrible. That's why these gentlemen were showing their first videos, to let you know that the first pass ain't it. There's no reason to expect that it's gonna be it. And when you can have other people work with you on it, it's even better. We turned in, tried to turn in, a 70,000 word manuscript. And our editor at Wiley, Richard Narimer, was like, uh-uh, 60,000 words max. That was some editing like going through to rip out 10,000 words. But it's funny, if you remember Steve's presentation yesterday talking about um, the, the sales process as well as photography, you wanna strip as much away as possible until the subject is seen as clearly and in the exact context that you want it to be in. This book is way better for having ripped out those 10,000 words. Here's another one. Our design team is awesome at BombBomb. Bomb. They're responsible for all the gorgeous branding on this event, the event website. They also, Ava Gretzinger did the cover of, of 
the book. And this was the original illustration. When we put forth a proposal to try to get a publishing deal, we had the title, Relationships Through Video, and this was the illustration that went with it. And on the call with our editor, he had an assistant editor that he was onboarding, like a, a late 20-something young lady. And her question, Relationships Through Video, this image, so this is a book about online dating? And we're like, oh, okay, back to the drawing board, literally. That's not what it's about. So here was an interim version of the cover graphic, right? A little bit different. You notice some changes there, and it ultimately turned into this. You'll notice three changes in particular. One, that kind of fussy play bar and record button and play button detail is now gone. It's much cleaner. In addition, the two people are now truly connected in conversation through a giant play button, which evokes video and the relationship through video without saying it. Of course, we changed the title as well. And then third, you'll notice that these people are clearly business people. The button is now a tie on the gentleman, and the blouse collar is now a jacket collar on uh, what is probably a woman or a man with some really cool hair. And, and so together with a revised title and subtitle, you have a, a book that's clearly a business book about video, right? And so there's no reason to expect that the first thing we would put forth would be perfect, right? So why do we do it to ourselves? It doesn't make any sense. We need to work these processes out. Here's one of the reasons why that happens. We get tied up in all the things that are urgent and important. The things that are urgent and important you have to do right now. Phone rings or text message lights up, client situation, on fire, deal with it immediately, right? But we also have things that we're dealing with that are urgent but not so important. But we can maybe treat them as if they are. We need to be very intentional about what we're doing and what we're not doing to create the space to start and try new things and to improve the things that we've already brought to life. So these are the things that we might punt or better yet, assign to somebody else to take care of. This is my favorite quadrant, not urgent, not important. Why are you doing it? Or why are you doing it outside your leisure time? You need to be real honest with yourself about what these things are and what you should be doing and not doing. And then finally, no one was begging for a book. I hope you're glad that it's here, but no one was saying, yeah, I like the software, I like the training, I like the webinar, I like my support person. Man, I can't wait to read a book about this, <laughs> right? Important though, super important. This is gonna be so good for the community and for the movement, but no one was begging for it. It's the same thing with like, no one is begging for your, your new YouTube playlist. Is it important to get it up there? It's super important to Karen Carr. That's why she got after it, and the results bring her back and back and back again to building out a YouTube channel. These things that you're sitting on, you need to be really clear about yourself what is truly important and make the time to make it happen. So uh, a couple summaries on you can't edit what isn't written. You have to start before you can iterate. You're not gonna be perfect the first time. That should be obvious. One of the reasons we don't start is that it seems intimidating. Man, 60,000 word, 250 page book. I don't know about all that. It's not a 60,000 word book. It wasn't a 70,000 word manuscript. It was about 20, 3,500 word pieces that by design come together into a coherent whole. So if you can take something that looks really big and hard and just kind of chip away at it, break it into four pieces, break it into eight pieces, break those eight pieces into eight more pieces, all of a sudden it becomes immediately manageable. This one I love. This is another thing that it was echoed at the conference here. This is what uh, Jesse Peters' video was about this morning on his gym journey. Tell people and make it public. So I knew, I, I knew this book needed to be written. I knew I was going to do it. So I, I just started doing it between five and six in the morning, most mornings. And of course, my wife's wondering, what are you doing? And so I start talking to her about it. My wife, Megan, who's just so loving and supportive and kind in all things, told me two important things. This is something you can do, and this is something you should do. That was really encouraging to me. And of course, as I started spending the better part of a Saturday or a Sunday writing, my son was wondering what was going on, 15-year-old son Owen. And when I told him what I was doing, he was super proud. He's like, this is a book? You're gonna be an author? That's really cool. He's a reader. He was super jacked about it. And like, that was motivating. And then, you know, five, six, seven, eight thousand 8,000 words in, I start talking to Steve about it. And Steve, 
he got really excited really quickly. And I don't know how many of you know Steve well, but when Steve gets excited, the 18 people anywhere in arm's reach or a 10-foot pole are going to be jacked. So Steve gets everyone else excited about it. So the executive team gets on board and we start harnessing the resources we're going to need to pull off this project at the scale and on the timeline that we wanted to. When you tell people and you make it public, you're going to get solicited and unsolicited support. People love to be of value and service just as you love to be of value and service. And so the more you can tell people, the more accountability and the more support and momentum you're gonna get along the way. At some point in this process, the thing was just rolling downhill and it was just happening. It wasn't really even an effort anymore. That's a lie, it was really freaking hard. <laughs> Last one here, make a deadline. So in this dynamic where you know something is important but it is not urgent, one way to create some urgency is to make a deadline. That's it, you make the deadline and you honor it. Our editor said, if you can give me a manuscript by Thanksgiving, I will give you finished books by the end of April. How does that sound? We said, that sounds amazing. We're doing our first ever live event in Denver in May. It would be great to have it there. And so we honored the deadline and here we are. Again, stack of books waiting for you outside. Tap in, last one here, tap into the power of yet. Steve never said to himself, I'm not an Amazon, Barnes and Noble and 800 CEO read bestselling author. He said, I'm not a best-selling author yet. I didn't say I've never written a book. Gosh, I, I can't do that, I've never written a book. I haven't written a book yet. This is simple growth mindset stuff, right? So if you're saying, I'm not the kind of person who sends a video to my database, yeah. yet, right? It's that simple. And you start entertaining the possibilities. You're in complete control. I know this, you're a room of entrepreneurs. You're in complete control of what you do and what you don't do, and everything that you want to make possible can be done. It just hasn't been done yet. <clears throat> Last one, you were a pioneer. Denver, Colorado, where you are right now, even though it doesn't look like it outside. Founded in 1858, named after James W. Denver. Uh, he was the territorial governor of the Kansas Territory. Interestingly, the Kansas Territory is what is now Colorado. And about a decade after this town was founded, the population exploded. It blew up from 5,000 to 35,000 people in less than a year's time. And it was because there were rumors of gold and silver in the hills and mountains west of here. Flash forward 150 years, here we are today. City of about three million people. Median home price in the metro area, about 400K. In the city, single, house, uh, single family house, 500K median. Though most of the gold and silver has been mined, oil and gas remain, aerospace and defense, software and technology, travel and tourism, so many rich and vibrant industries operating in this city, a top 20 US city, really dynamic place. Companies that are coastal are building headquarters here just to create that, that ability to get back and forth and, and to build in a place that people wanna be. Really, really exciting place, really nicely developed, a lot more expensive than it was even a decade ago. So in a room like this, if you're one of those people that's kind of just getting going with video or started a little bit but don't really have any habits, in a room like this, on breaks and on stages and you're, you're watching speakers and talking to each other, it's really easy for you to feel like you were in Denver, May 2019. And literally you are, but I'm not speaking literally right now. It's easy to feel like you were in Denver, May 2019 in this video movement, but you are not. You are in Denver, 1870, when the population exploded. When I started at BombBomb Bomb in 2011, we had a couple few hundred customers. Now we have 45,000 in dozens of countries around the world. And so that initial population boom has begun, but do not make a mistake. You are a pioneer, and this is Denver 1870. There are millions of people on the way behind you. And as we look at the way we're doing video today, which is uh, the attraction of gold and silver, it is going to become much more uh, diverse, much more interesting, much more rich, and you have all those opportunities available to you. So do not feel like you are behind this thing. This is just getting going. And this movement belongs to you. These are all awesome people who uh, ordered the book, they shared the book, they're excited about the book. 
If you, when you get your copy in the back, if you want to shoot and share it, awesome. At mention me, at mention Steve, at mention bomb bomb, hashtag rehumanize. We want to celebrate you as a pioneer. We want you to help lead the way for other people. That is our responsibility for people who know there is a better way. We do not hoard it. We share it and we talk about it. This is your book. In addition, these are some of the illustrations. Again, our, the whole thing is a beautiful branded experience from cover through the page and section breaks to the illustrations. Uh, it's a, like a really cool, fun branded experience. These are smart designs. That's Nancy and Ruby and Michael and Steve and Ken, just a handful of people who are illustrated in the book. I hope that one day, about 10, 20 years from now, we look back at these. Of course, it was printed in black and white, so it already lends itself to this kind of mentality, which is how I got there. You know how you go to a theme park and you can get those tin time photos where you and your family dress up with like a musket and some of these other things, like, like real frontier type stuff? I hope we look back in 10 or 20 years and we look at these illustrations and we look at the examples and we look at where we all were together in 2019 and really feel like tin time photos, like we've come so far and we will, but only if we do it together. This is your community. This is your book. This is your philosophy. This is your practice. You've been in this room the past two and a half days and felt like these are my people. These are your people. This is what we do. This is how we work. And we do it together, right? Like BombBomb is enabling this. We give you software to do it. We create an event like this uh, to try to, to bring it together. We publish stuff. We have a louder voice than a lot of individual people in the room just in the way that we work and the sc scope that we're working at. So we help facilitate it. We curate it. We celebrate stories and all of that. But this is yours, and you need to live it. The, the worst thing that could happen here, Jason just said it, the worst thing that could happen is you buy your ticket to rehumanize, you get on a plane, you come to Denver, you, you get a hotel room, you hang out for two and a half days, you have a bunch of notes, you have photos, I saw a bunch of people shooting photos of the screen, you have all this stuff and you go home and you're like, man, that was awesome. And you don't do anything. You need to live this. You need to send, the easiest thing you can do is pick two people out of social media, out of your phone, out of your database, and just say hi, or I've been thinking about you, or how's it going, or congratulations to Timmy captaining the soccer team. And I do want to end with one caution here, and it's the paradox of vulnerability. We leaned on a number of awesome authors and, and, and researchers and thought leaders. One of them was Brene Brown, so I'm going to use her definition of vulnerability, which is the feeling you experience in times of risk, uncertainty, and emotional exposure. Risk, uncertainty, and emotional exposure. Think about all the best times in your life. The time you decided to open up your own business and, and just do it. Or the time you got your first deal done. Or when you proposed marriage or accepted a proposal for marriage or found out you were pregnant or had your first child or you made the team or you set a personal best. All of the best moments in your life, 100%. Risk, uncertainty, and emotional exposure. That's what our lives are. We put our names on the front of a book and got the whole team behind it. Hours and hours from dozens of BombBomb Bomb team members, thousands of dollars. What if it flopped and my name's on the front of it? Or Steve's name's on the front of it. I get to at least share that burden, right? <laughs> what if nobody buys it? Or worse, what if everybody buys it and they hate it? What if the ideas aren't very good? What if they're not that original? What if they don't resonate with people? What if nobody talks about it? What if no one leaves an Amazon review? Seriously, you should leave an Amazon review. <laughs> uh, it's a big deal. Um, and it'd be really helpful. Um, have you had thoughts like this about something you've, you've thought about doing or been in the middle of? Of course you have, because all the best stuff comes when you unlock it by being who you are and being comfortable in those vulnerable moments. I know it sounds a little bit soft, but as it is in life, so it is in video. Michael said it this morning. Many, many other people said it today, too. Michael says, I've got thousands and thousands of dollars of video equipment. I've built multiple studios. I got all these lights and all this stuff. But if you were to pry one piece of equipment from my cold, dead hand, because that'd be the only way you would get it, it's my iPhone. You've heard from other people on the stage. I do video here, I do video there, I did this series, did that series, got a zillion views here, I got 18,000 subscribers here. 
But the videos that come through the best are my simplest ones. When you strip away production, you strip away all that text. By the way, don't some of these social networks look like they're designed for people uh, learning English as a second language? Like words flying all over the screen. Like, you strip all that stuff away. You strip away the production. It's just you and the camera and the person that the video is for. So that you can be seen and heard and felt and understood. And so that you, especially in a one-to-one -one context, can let that other person in your life know whether they're excited or concerned or confused or anxious or nervous or sad or whatever they're feeling, that you can reach out and connect with them and say, I see you, I hear you, I feel you, I understand you, and we're in this together because that is what all of this is about. So we wrote a book about it in a business context. We created an event. You brought this event to life. It is an absolute privilege to share this with you. Um, if you're wondering when the next one is, it's not going to be before May 2020. Okay. It's definitely not going to be that. And you'll be the first to know about it. We sincerely appreciate you being here. We sincerely appreciate you helping carry this torch forward. It's up to all of us to let people know that there's a better way. There's a better way to work. And there's a better way to live. And it's in connection with each other. Thank you.